I have a theory that I like to call the enthusiast trap. And according to this theory, it is nearly impossible for a tech company to be a successful enthusiast brand on the long run. Let me explain why in the 14th episode of the Story Behind series. The last few months have been quite weird for independent or indie or enthusiast tech brands, whatever you call them. Cyanogen Inc. pretty much declared that their plans to take over the world have failed. My favorite tech brand, Pebble, was bought by Fitbit, and so was Vector Watch, just before Fitbit itself announced that they too are in trouble and will therefore lay off more than 100 people. And to top it off, Nextbit, the company who thought they had reinvented the smartphone, was bought by Razer. I could shrug these off as companies that just weren't, I don't know, competitive enough, and I'm sure that there's some level of truth to that. But I also think that there's a bigger, more fundamental problem here. And I think you've guessed it, it's the enthusiast trap. And like every good trap, it starts with a kind of lure. Something that is just a little too good to be true. So a bunch of people decide to launch a new company. Let's take Pebble as an example. They would start small because they don't have the money at first. So instead of a big advertisement campaign and worldwide retail ability, they will decide to focus on early adopters. You know, people like you and me who actively go and look for cool new products. We don't need expensive TV advertisements to be convinced. We just need the product to be cool. We're actually willing to give these companies money before their products even launch. Launch. Just think of Pebble and their Kickstarter records, right? So if the company manages to create something that gets a big enough chunk of us excited, then they don't have to approach us, we'll approach them, and then we will do the advertisement for them. There are books written about this. Some call it inbound marketing, others call it evangelism, and whatever you call it, half of Silicon Valley was wearing Pebble watches, and I too got like 10 friends of mine to buy it and made a video raving about how much I love mine. It's the perfect strategy, right? Well, no, because remember, it's a trap. And for a couple of reasons, this is not a sustainable business model. The problem is that tech enthusiasts are a great group of customers to start with, but on the long term, they are just the worst. Business class 101. How can a company make money? It needs either scale so it can sell in large quantities, or it needs high profit margins, or at the very least, low investment costs. There is simply no other way. As it turns out, enthusiasts offer the exact opposite of this. We make up a tiny percentage of the population, so scale just isn't possible, and yet we have the highest standards of them all. That means you better invest and create the best possible product, or we just won't care about you. Somebody else launched a new phone one week after you with slightly better specs, you bet we will buy that one. You cheaped out on even a single component, like say the NFC chip in the OnePlus 2, well, you're not getting our money that way, so you need to invest, like a lot. And it used to be that being ahead of the curve meant that you could at least charge a premium. But companies like OnePlus have made even that impossible. The only way to win our hearts now is to be the best and at the same time have the lowest price, all while tailoring your product specifically for our small group. It's insane. It's the opposite of a sustainable business model and no company can realistically expect this little bubble of ours to work for them on the long run. So inevitably, the company starts to want to go mainstream, but that poses the next big challenge. Companies like Pebble, Nextbit, OnePlus and Cyanogen Inc. have built their entire businesses around appealing to us. And it turns out that the rest of the world wants fundamentally different things from their tech than we do. Pebble watches were all about being quirky and geeky, and they never really appeal to regular people. In the same way, no non-techie would have gotten excited about things like routing or flashing ROMs or having a great online forum where you can geek out with your community, which were cornerstones of companies like OnePlus, Nextbit, and Cyanogen. And the opposite is true as well. Oppo, for example, has shown that things like taking good selfies are apparently fantastic selling points for many people around the world, but they just don't resonate with us enthusiasts. So a company that started out as an enthusiast brand now has to make a really tough choice. Do they keep fighting for our cold, mechanical hearts? Or do they pivot to bigger and maybe more profitable markets, but at the expense of losing us, their core original audience? Or can they maybe please both caps? Well, let me show you a few examples. 
Pebble tried to find balance as they continued to try to please their original customers like me, but also introduced the time round that was meant for a more fashion conscious audience, and again when they focused their third generation of watches on fitness to try to capture some of that Fitbit crowd. Problem is, they didn't want to upset us by going too far away from their roots of being quirky and geeky, so they didn't actually end up appealing to their new audience, but they also didn't spend their resources on developing things that we cared about anymore, so they ended up with a lose-lose situation. Cyanogen tried to split off their enthusiast platform and wanted to go mainstream with their commercial solutions by branching out into working with phone manufacturers and allowing them to sell phones with Cyanogen out of the box. But it turns out that running Cyanogen isn't something that most regular consumers care about. And of course they also lost touch with their original community that felt left behind and betrayed by having Cyanogen focus somewhere else. Lose lose again. Next bit, well, as much as I liked parts of them, I think they never even got to the point of wanting to leave because they just never managed to make a dent in any market. OnePlus, on the other hand, is going back and forth, trying really hard to find that middle ground. It originally took the enthusiast market by storm with their first phone and sold over a million OnePlus ones. Their promise was a high-end smartphone for us geeks with no bullshit, no superfluous spending on ads, and so on. But as soon as the 2 wasn't warmly received by the geeks, they quickly decided to pivot with the X, which was targeted at a much less tacky audience. The X was supposed to be all about design and was marketed to women and lifestyle customers. They collaborated with posh Parisian fashion retailers and, according to my sources, sold terribly. I guess, surprisingly enough, fashion models don't want to buy phones from enthusiast brands. The community backlash that year was huge. There were articles upon articles about how the company lost focus and how it will fail. So they caved a little and returned to their original audience with the OnePlus 3 just as quickly as they left them after the 2. Thankfully the 3 performed much better, but they haven't given up on their pivot just yet. Check this video. It's an ad with freaking Emilia Ratajkowski, or whatever you call it. Signing her alone must have cost millions. And then they started shooting professional commercials that they're spamming all of YouTube with, and also made billboard ads too. That, my friends, is the very definition of a company trying to appeal to a non-tacky audience through very, very traditional means. OnePlus has clearly done a good job with the 3, but they too know that they're playing with fire and that they'll eventually have to make a choice. In a OnePlus blog post from 2015, they themselves say that big marketing spending will upset their customers. And the comment section agrees, but they're clearly tempted to break their own rules, and we can only wait and see how well it will work for them. A much more drastic approach, and my last one on this list, will be that of Oppo. I have worked for the company, so I know the situation very well. When I joined them in 2013, they were a great brand for enthusiasts. High-end specs, great custom ROM support, a strong community and all that. And then one day they simply decided that this business model didn't make any sense for them and made a complete 180 degree turn. They shifted all of their attention to mid-range phones with locked bootloaders, specs clearly not aimed at enthusiasts, and a focus on selfies. Yeah, that's uh, I think about as drastic as it gets. The enthusiasts all left the company, and yet it became incredibly successful, growing from being an obscure brand to becoming the number four largest smartphone vendor in the world in just a few years, because it aggressively built its new audience way faster than it lost its old one. I guess it all comes down to this in the end. It's called the product lifecycle graph, and it's pretty self-explanatory. When a product is launched, and if things go well, it gets picked up by early adopters first, and and then by the masses. The problem that enthusiast brands have is that they owe so much of their success to these early adopters that they often never get to go to the later stages. They can feel and see that the other 80 something percent of the market is still there for them to address, but making the choice of leaving the first bubble behind is neither a guarantee to success nor is it an easy choice. Poor Nextbit never even got to try, Pebble and Cyanogen tried but failed. OnePlus is somewhere on the edge, uh, figuring out whether they can go on or not, and Oppo made a drastic change and became incredibly successful because of it. But in either case, none of the outcomes usually end up being good for us, the enthusiasts, because if the brand decides to stay with us, there's a good chance that they won't be able to have a healthy business and they'll eventually fail. But if they leave, then, well, they'll leave us behind, right? And this is what I call the enthusiast trap, and it's why I think 
every enthusiast brand is sooner or later basically bound to betray us. Okay, so that got pretty dark, but it's something I've had on my mind for a very long time, especially since I worked at Oppo. And by the way, I'm not here to tell you not to buy things from enthusiast brands. I buy them all the time and I think it's a great thing. But just understand that these companies can't always stay with us until forever and then just be successful with us. And so when they decide to leave, just let them go and hop on to the next thing. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button below. And if you want to see more thought-provoking videos from the Story Behind series, then uh, they're somewhere here, at least the past episodes. Also hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell button next to the subscribe button so you can be double subscribed. Also follow me on all the socials. I'm Tech Altar pretty much everywhere. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.